Okay, behind me you can see Pig, who is a 21-year-old male dugong. Now he's a rescue animal and I'm going to tell you about how he got his name Pig. Now, a lot of people call dugong sea cows, which is totally acceptable, you know, definitely one of the common names. Another common name that a lot of people don't know about that's used in other areas of the world where you can find dugongs is sea pigs. Now, the rescue facility that had actually taken Pig in when he was a little tiny baby, they had tried to rescue a couple of other dugongs before that, and unfortunately, it hadn't gone well. So they didn't want to get attached to young Pig. So they would say when they were going to go feed him, who's ready to go feed the Pig? Um, so they would say, it's my turn to feed the Pig. They didn't want to attach a human name to him. As he got bigger and stronger and kept growing, the name kind of morphed from the pig into pig and then it stuck. So by the time they knew that he was out of the woods and he was going to make it and be a big, strong, healthy dugong, um, that just was his name. It stuck that way and that's why we call him pig. So a lot of people ask about animals that we might see throughout the aquarium that are living by themselves. Now, yes, some animals do live in big groups, um, schools or herds, but quite a lot of animals are solitary. So we really have to respect the animal's biology and group the animals according to what they would be in the wild. Now, pig being a male dugong won't live with other dugongs in the wild. So you may see females foraging on seagrass in the same area, so you can get big herds of dugongs congregating around great seagrass um, but it's more to do with the food than actually interacting with each other. We have made our way up from the tunnels into our lettuce kitchen which is where we prepare the food for pig. Now you can see lots of lettuce all around me because that is what he eats almost all day long. So pig feeds on a tray of lettuce roughly every 10 or 15 minutes. These trays can weigh up to two kilos. So you can see that he actually eats a lot of food in the day. He can eat up to around 35 kilos of lettuce each uh, single day. Now, the reason for that is his uh, digestive system is a little bit like a horse's, except much, much longer. So a horse will take about one day to digest their food and a dugong will take seven times longer than that, seven days to digest the food that he eats. So the reason for feeding him something like lettuce that doesn't have much nutrients is because it takes so long going through his stomach and so much is pulled out of the food as it travels through the digestive system. If we were to feed him really rich food, it would actually make him sick. So this is the best way to feed pig with lots and lots of lettuce all day long. He also eats foods uh, for training treats. So he loves mung bean sprouts, he loves snow pea sprouts, and those are little treats that we save for our um, public encounters and for our interactions throughout the day, such as training. So uh, you can see behind me, we have his uh, menu for the day. I don't know if you can see that breakfast is lettuce, lunch is lettuce and dinner is lettuce. A lot of people that uh, think that doesn't sound very exciting, but to pig, he actually really loves it. In the wild, dugongs eat seagrass. So obviously seagrass and lettuce are a little bit different, but the reason we cannot feed seagrass to pig is it's actually a vulnerable species of plant and it's protected by Australian legislation. So if we were to go out into the wild and take the seagrass, we'd be breaking the law. So to make up for that, what we do is feed the lettuce. And then on top of that, he gets uh, vitamins and mineral supplements. He gets different types of food um, to make up the difference between the seagrass and the lettuce.